it's Miss Fulton. I know I told you guys I would catch you up on the critical lens lesson. There are about six lenses. So I have um, three boxes on the board. We're gonna do the first three and then I'm gonna erase it and we'll do the next three. Um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna kinda go over each lens and what a lens is. And I'm gonna give you one um, example that was from an article in the news. And then at the very end, you're gonna apply with your own example and then I'll make you apply it to a video. So that way we can get better at applying the lenses. And the idea of doing this is so you can do really well when you write your essays. And we love doing good on our essays. So what is a lens? A lens is something that you can look through to understand somebody else's perspective um, or point of view. So imagine a lens being like a window that you could look through and you're only going to see things from that point of view. So how could we analyze something from a teacher's perspective? Or what would a historian say about that? So imagine if the lens was historical. What would a historian say about that? How could that add value to a museum? Why did that take place in time? What does it mean for that time period? What were the consequences? We're not gonna use that lens, but that's just an example. So as I'm going through, if you need to pause and um, take notes, go ahead. I've given you this worksheet. This is my little cheat sheet, but I'm doing it on the board. Your worksheet should look like this. If you ha don't have a printer at home, totally cool. You can just go ahead and draw this beautiful chart. I'll step back for a second so you can pause the video. You're gonna want six of these empty boxes, okay? So make sure you leave yourself the whole page. If you print it out, just go ahead and do it while I am writing on the board. So the first lens we wanna look at is the economic financial. So economic financial is like, whoa, Miss Fulton, those are some big words. So when I think economics and finance, I think like home loans, taxes, like money, maybe, uh, I don't know, what else? Uh, personal finance, like savings, checkings, bills. A lot of you came up with some really great ideas while we were in class. Um, but if I were to write down, I'm just gonna jot some ideas in the definition so that way you can be like, oh yeah, that's the economic and finance lens. So we've got money, we might wanna look at something if it has money or the market, right? Like the stock market or personal finances. So personal finances being like home loans, car repayments, savings, checkings, stuff like that. Um, so that is what makes the economic finance lens. Those are the things that I would ask myself like, does it have to do with this? Can I see it through this lens? Can I use this lens? I've got money and market and personal finances. I think it might be the economic finance lens. Now, I know that this is really wordy and maybe it's still not making sense. So let's use a really sad example from the news so you can remember it. So this is something that really did happen. Um, an example is uh, an alligator attack. So we are in Florida. A couple years ago, there was um, a really sad accident where a kid got drowned by an alligator on Disney property. Um, it was late at night, the kid was playing on the playground and the alligator came up and dragged him into the water. Uh, unfortunately, he did not survive that. However, let's look at it through the economic and finance lens. Um, well, now that the, the child has passed away, there's going to be funeral costs, right? Because there's the money, right? Economic, financial, there's funeral costs. If I'm looking through the economic, financial lens, right? I'm peering through that window. Well, I only see money. So funeral costs, but then I'm thinking, hmm, money, um, lawsuits. Disney probably got sued, so lawsuits. Right? I don't know if this is true. Um, you probably just have to look it up. There might be a payout, right? Where they're like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Here's some money. Again, I don't know if that's true, but let's just look at it through the economic and financial lens. Um, there might be lawyer bills. Ooh, lawyer bills. 
maybe um, a lot of you in class came up with this. Um, maybe now that they have to grieve over their child, maybe there's therapy costs. That was a really good point. I think somebody in seventh period made. All right. So the next lens is education. So let's go ahead and write education. I'll get out of the way so you guys can pause the video. All right. So when I'm thinking education, I think, ooh, school, learning. So we can put down school. You know, you go to school to learn things. A lot of you made that very clear, you know, school, learning. But who's in schools? Students and teachers. Um, then we think about our futures, right? Maybe careers. A good point that a lot of you made is that a career doesn't necessarily have to be limited to going to college and getting that kind of job. There's also like hands-on jobs, right? Can't forget that, like mechanics and welders. Important stuff. All right, so we've got that kind of stuff. So if I'm seeing something in an article that is about, oh, this school. Well, I, that's my key word to be like, okay, I have to think about this from the educational lens. So let's look at the alligator example. Now the people who got attacked on Disney property, their child got attacked, they were from a northern state. In the state of Florida, and this is a question I asked in class, it's kind of like, how many of you in school were taught to run in zigzags to avoid an alligator? Well, up north, they don't really teach you that because alligators don't necessarily live there too much. So these people, didn't know that like you're not, you're not supposed to go near the water. They thought it was safe because they were at Disney. So what we need to do, or what, what should happen, I should say, is teaching water and wild animal safety. So we're teaching water and wildlife safety. Um, maybe if there was a little bit more danger posed to the water that was nearby, or even the animals that lurked, maybe something as tragic as this wouldn't happen. And so teaching people on a wide scale platform uh, would make it a lot safer, right? Another thing is that we wanna educate staff members. So maybe the manager learned a lesson from this, like what can we do to make this safer how can we educate the people on staff how can we educate security how can we educate our guests who are going to be showing up right all right let's move to the next lens which brings me to my next point we kept talking about being safe being safe health and safety i think this is a big one especially because many of you mentions a lot about COVID and you're right, that does affect us a lot. So obviously your health and safety is your body, right? Has to do with your body, your overall health, um, your safety. So like, new, I mean, nutrition, maybe medicine that you, you take um, to, to stay healthy um, and then safety, you know, laws and rules. There's laws and rules in society to keep you safe, like seatbelt laws or being old enough to drive or all kinds of different things. So we've got, if we're looking at health and safety, we've got your body, nutrition, medicine, and laws and rules. Next, we've got our alligator example. Yes, we're going to get into it. Now, apparently... There was signs posted by the lake, but maybe they should have made those signs a little bit clearer because it posed a safety concern. So we'll say, make signs clearer. Oops. 
Oops, that's supposed to be a C. Let me fix it for you guys. CL. Make signs clearer. Um, maybe have better lighting. Lights and fences. If there was a fence around the lake, there's a possibility that the alligator would have never been able to get to the child or people wouldn't have been so close to the water, right? So the health and safety concerns here are making clear signs, lights outside so they can see, and fences around the perimeter of the lake. All right, so you can go ahead and pause the video if you need to. All right, so what I am going to do now is um, Ms. Fulton's going to erase this and we're gonna move on to the next three. I'm trying to move as fast as possible, only because I don't want this to be a painful 15 minute video where you do this for three hours. So let's get started, or finished, I should say. Uh -huh. All right. Let me fix my beautiful chart. Well, I hope you guys aren't too stressed out this week. I know it's a little stressful trying to fix grades. I definitely missed a lot of you. And I'm hoping whoever is watching this is getting a lot out of this. And if you still don't understand it by the end, you could totally come see me during your lunch period. That's totally fine. All right, so what I want you to do is we're gonna do personal emotional. Ooh, this one's a lot better. Personal. I like this export marker. Then social, which you guys seem to really like this category, and then morals and ethics. So we're gonna save the hardest one for last. Okay, so I'll move out of the way. Personal, emotional, social, and morals and ethics. So let's go over personal, emotional. A lot of you had a lot of words for this. You were like, yeah, feelings, in your feels. So maybe when we look at this lens, we think of somebody's mood or um, your motivations, right? Because your personal goals, motivations. Um, then we've got mental health. A lot of you emphasize mental health, which is exciting because we're gonna be going into that this week. So super exciting stuff. Um, feelings, feels. Lots of you wrote feelings all over the posters we did in class. You're like, feelings, feels, feels, feels. This is where we see relationships too. Like, how do the relationships make us feel? Maybe it's an emotional pull, you know, to your friends or the, your boyfriend or girlfriend or your family, right? It's your personal life and your emotional side of you. All right. So let's see the personal and kind of emotional consequences to this scenario with the alligator. So there's definitely going to be fault or blame placed on someone, right? Fault or blame. That could be placed on Disney, the people who are working, the parents, the child, the alligator. I mean, the alligator is at fault, let's be real. But then we've got grief. The family's gonna be feeling a lot of grief, or their emotions, they're gonna be feeling grief, they're gonna be sad, right? Because somebody from their family is no longer there. There might be guilt. Now, some of you might have been in class when Miss Andrade mentioned this, but um, she did say that maybe the mom feels guilt, right? Cause she, Miss Andrade's a mom, so from her perspective, like she might feel guilty, like why did I ever let my kid near the water? Like that kind of thing. All right, and then therapy. Because there was another child present that watched their sibling pass away or the parents, and a lot of you seem to really like to look at the perspective through mental health. So we're gonna put, they might need therapy, right? They might need therapy for their emotions. We never know. All right, so let's move to social. If I'm looking through my social bubble, you guys really like this one. We've got our connections to other people. We've got media, community. We've got entertainment. When I say entertainment, I'm talking about you can go bowling with your friends or some of you might go to the movie theaters or go on TikTok or whatever else you do for entertainment. I don't know, what is it, the strawberry festivals around right now? 
right? Entertainment, um, technology, but I'm going to abbreviate it as tech, lifestyle, relationships. I think also the social bubble is where we see discrimination. Discrimination falls into the sense of maybe your friends discriminate against you and they say like, oh, like that girl is really annoying and I don't want to invite her anymore. And then you're the girl left out of the friend group in that kind of sense, right? People act hateful towards one another in our social lens, right? So we've got connections to other people, social media, a sense of community, entertainment, technology, lifestyle, relationships, discrimination. When I am reading an article or I'm watching a movie or whatever it is, and I see all of these things, I would be like, you know what? If I look through the social lens, how would that affect the main character? Or if I look through the social lens, how would that affect their relationship? Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so then we have the alligator example. Uh, we've got people who witnessed the accident Maybe there were people who were just recording it for clout and didn't do anything. A lot of you mentioned that. They, you, got, you guys, you're really hardcore about the clout chasers. Um, maybe people will make comments on social media. They'll be like, oh, how could you do that? You know, they'll always have negative or they'll have positive. Like, oh, thinking about you or I'm so sorry that happened sending positive thoughts or something like that. They're always gonna comment on the articles or the videos. And speaking of articles, it could be bad PR for Disney, right? No one wants to go stay at a hotel where somebody got attacked by an alligator. There might be news reports. But the best part is that people will support them. When someone passes away, oftentimes, families will become really supportive or friends will be supportive and be like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. So we've got support from society or from your friends or your family. Next, we, I'll step aside because that was a lot. I'll let you guys pause the video. All right, and I'm back. So morals and ethics. This is hard. A lot of you kind of had an idea of what this was and a lot of you didn't. Morals and ethics are like a, your, your normal inside sense of what's right and what's wrong. It's not necessarily a law, but it's a rule. It's kind of like girl code or guy code. It's kind of like that. Like you don't break that. That's not cool. Or I mean, technically nobody's stopping you from doing that bad thing, but like inside you feel kind of guilty about it. Or, you know, if you've ever had that gut feeling that tells you that, you know, that's not a good idea. Um, that's the idea of morals and ethics. And so morals is your sense of right and wrong. Um, this is where we see character. Now we've discussed what character is. It is the willingness to do the right thing when no one is looking. So your morals tell you, hey, you know, that kid dropped his entire binder and his papers went all over the floor. I should probably help him pick that up. Nobody else is in the hallway to watch you do it. Nobody's gonna give you a gold star for doing it, but you feel bad for them, so you go and do it anyways. That's what having character is. Or respect, understanding somebody else's emotions and treating them like a human being. Respect. This is where we see a lot of the isms too. So when I say isms, I'm talking like racism, classism, sexism, all the isms, right? Um, it's kind of like, is it right? Is it wrong? What should we do as a society? Should we do anything at all? Who is affected by this? It's all those big life questions that's kind of like, whoa, man, how do we feel about this? Those are morals and ethics. It's technically not a law, but like, is it good? Is it bad? They're rules and regulations. So ethics are rules and regulations. Ethics doesn't necessarily mean that it's a law, but it's kind of like an unspoken rule, like girl code and guy code, right? You just say, well, that's girl code. Like, you don't talk to somebody like that or something like that. It's an unspoken rule or regulation. All right, so mm, 
morality and ethically. With the alligator example, we could arguably say, you know what, parents should protect their kids, right? We always expect, you know, parents to protect kids that they'll always be safe, but that can't always be the case. And then people should know better. We say, oh, well, people should know better, right? Because it's just, it's ethics. It's a rule of regulation. Like if it's dark outside, you just don't go into the water. How will you see anybody? Or you don't go near water because how could you see somebody in the water? What if something happens? It's just kind of like one of those unspoken rules. And the kid did go near the water and something bad happened. So we could put that down as our example. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a second if you just want to write it down, pause it. All right. So now that we've gone through the whole chart, you've got this column as real world example. A real world example is COVID-19. Ah, so I know that the lens activity, I, I know this is a little confusing and maybe I talk too much, guilty, but using what we got out of the alligator example, right? You're looking through the social lens or you're looking through personal emotional or health and safety. I want you to give me an example for COVID-19 as it applies to that lens. And I want you to give me three of those. So I'm gonna give you one. So if it was personal emotional for COVID-19, I would say that people are, uh, a lot of you said depressed. Um, people are lonely only meet virtually um, people have a hard time connecting all right so maybe they're depressed, maybe they're lonely and only meeting people virtually, or they're having a hard time connecting to others, right? We all know how it felt to be e-learning. Maybe some of you were e-learning in the fall or how it felt to be e-learning last spring, right? How COVID-19, we can't have tons of parties, you know, like birthday parties and um, meeting your friends at the bowling alley because of COVID-19 restrictions. So things aren't normal. So I did that example. I want you to come up with three more. I'm gonna give you a second. Go ahead and pause the video here. Go ahead and think of those examples. Okay, great, welcome back. So now that you've done that, I will set you free into the universe. Feel free to rewind, get these notes, you know, talk to, uh, you know, your, yourself, I guess, about this, or maybe a classmate, either way. In the Canvas message I've included this video in, there are instructions to watch a YouTube video. It's a TV show that I used to watch when I was a kid. It's called Recess. And it's this silly TV show about these kids who have recess and they treat it like a kingdom and it's just really silly. What I want you to do on the back of your piece of paper or your worksheet, I want you to look at two lenses as you watch the video and explain to me um, why it was that lens. So two examples that you saw of a lens and how people were affected or why that applies to that lens. Try to get this done as fast as you can. Get it to me in the blue bin by Friday. I hope this wasn't too terrible and I hope you're not confused, but if you are, please come see me during your lunch period. Hopefully I can explain it a little bit better. Until then, bye guys, have a good day.